What's up, gays? Straights and other things. It's Mally. I'm back with an episode of Lady in Mystery with Juhi's Route. And it has been every bit as hilarious as I thought it would be. And I'm so excited to keep going with this. So let's just get right into it. I cannot wait anymore. Today's client was an old couple. The old man was wearing a black gat, however small the brim is, and the old lady was wearing well ironed clothes. Those two people kept tapping their knees when they came to Zheng Huso as if their knees hurt. Then as soon as they stepped into the store, they bowed down to the ground. Yisu was so sure that it was about their child as soon as he saw them. The old couple did actually talk about their missing son while crying. The second son and the third son left the house to do business, but only the third son came back and the second son hasn't been home for ten days now, sir. We went to the River Commission Agency in Mapo Port, but they said the only merchant can get in and kicked us out. What should we do when they won't even let the parents in? Please help me, sir. Please. Please, let me know how my son's doing. His name is Lee Soma and he's six feet tall and... What? Juhi kept thinking that Hisu shouldn't have taken that request then. Oh, that's right, we're in her point of view. Oh my god, okay. Because she has to see this now. What? What are you complaining about? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Funny though, though, there's several reasons why I'm laughing. One, Hisu's already a woman, so she's basic. Well, Soul Young, sorry. Soul Young is already a woman, so this, this is So Young dressed up as a man who is dressed up trying to dress up as a woman. <laughs> tell if the ladies were wearing makeup with this like anime art style or um yeah that's what that's called isn't it because it's like animated that's what that means i don't fucking know <laughs> but he, just looking at this i could tell that soul young is wearing heavy heavy makeup <laughs> okay i can do this i oh, come back mal <laughs> And I look so angry. Ah, oh, here we go. Ugh, Miss Juhi, you can't tie my skirt like this. Oh, you have a pretty yellow skirt, though, Hisu. Only a prestigious family like your family tie skirts on the left side. And only noble women who live in Northern Village make a hair bun that low. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to tie all these again by myself. Juhi was dumbfounded looking at Hisu disguising as a woman. <laughs> it's not a disguise, it's not a fucking disguise. Hisu nagged Juhi, as usual, pointing at his hair, but she couldn't hear anything. Even though he's trying to sneak into the River Commission Agency, how can a guy dress up like a woman? Honestly, this is the most so young that she's ever been. Sans the makeup, I'm sure. Because she doesn't seem like the type that would enjoy wearing that every day. Her heart started to beat fast and she felt anxious for no reason. Juhi turned around and looked desperately at Wu Sung as if she's asking for help. Also, we haven't heard this lighthearted beat in such a long time and let me just say I have missed it after the angst that was Sa Yun's route. Oh my god. Okay, hi Wu Sung. <laughs> I'm so anxious. Just wear whatever he used to wear, please. <laughs> but Wu Sung was just scratching his head as if he was at a loss. We have no choice. We're quite well known in that area, so if my brother goes there, someone will recognize him. And this is bet okay. <laughs> Ugh. We have to disguise somehow in whatever way. We've been in debt to Gum Guy Gangs in Mapo Par area once. You've been in debt to Gum Guy Gang? When Juki got startled and screamed, Hisu laughed quietly in the corner. <laughs> That's so trippy. <laughs> I'm gonna get over this eventually. This is just so trippy. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> it was a really long time ago since it was when we first got here in Hanyang. He looked like a girl when he covered his mouth with his hands while laughing. Well, <laughs> these brothers had a huge debt when they first opened Zheng Huso. Even though the rent was really cheap since the location was bad, it was still too expensive for rural people to buy. So they had to borrow money in the past. They've been chased every day, so now all the debtors in Mapo know their faces. They were telling this scary story like it's some kind of fun episode. I mean, probably was for us, to be honest. 
I just look like a dork right now and I cannot get over it. We couldn't pay back, so we got beaten and blackmailed every day. I'm so over them now that I don't even want to go to that area anymore. But we have no choice since we got the request. We're going in disguise. Wusung, you should wear a bamboo hat and a Buddhist monk's robe. Are we just reverting to our old lives? Because that's basically it. Except Wusung wasn't a monk, he was the son of a shaman. Sh sh shit. <laughs> so Hisu decided to disguise as a female merchant, and Wusung decided to wear a Buddhist monk's robe on his big body. He didn't have to use the disguise since no one really gives a shit there. Hisu adjusted his hair and pulled out some crinkled merchant identity papers from his sleeves. Makwa borrowed them from merchants she met last night. Oh, that's our little thief. That's our little girl. Ah, oh, baby sister. Wusung, you won't be able to get into the commission agency anyway, so you should stay at the nearest tavern and scouting the neighborhood. Yes, brother. <laughs> okay. And you and I are now merchant sisters. No, no, do not make us sisters. You are going to kill the romance, Hisu. Oh my God. Wait a minute, she was already pretending to be my Shut up. <laughs> We're gonna go in there with these identity papers. So you should call me sister and Mapo. Are you really going to disguise this woman? Do you see this whole get up and the makeup that probably took an hour to put on? We're going because it will be hilarious. What if you get caught? I don't think so. Because I'm already a woman, so... Isu started walking in light steps with great confidence. He tied his skirt and exposed half of his calves in a vulgar way. <laughs> and he put lip gloss a lot in his lips like a weirdo. Hisu's a slut! <laughs> I'm he's switching from Soul Young and Hisu a lot. I'm sorry to Vance. As tacky as he is, though, Juhi couldn't take her eyes off his red lips. Yeah? See something you want? Come and get it, bitch. <laughs> she didn't expect it all, but Hisu walks like a woman better than any real woman. I am a real woman! <sighs> well, when you figure this out, Juhi, you can say I told you so all you want. He spun around and smiled brightly. All right, let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Logo. Oh, we're off to a great start. Oh my god, this is... <laughs> I love this. This is my favorite thing. Ooh, pretty card. Ooh, new episode, actually. Episode 8, Welcome to Mapo Port. So this must be a Juhi-specific episode, then. Huh, cool. Also, notice how the colors are kind of brighter. Like, I know, like, there's kind of, like, a dim overlay of gray over it. But over a lot of Sayun's episodes, there was a lot of, like, cool tone, blue, and, like, those kinds of colors, but... I don't know, maybe Juhi's is gonna follow like more reds and like warmer colors. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. Young Gang Commission Agency was a lot smaller and messier than Leader Kong's Songbong. <laughs> we'll be back for you later, baby. Um, <laughs> when the door opened, some merchants with shabby clothes looked up. Their faces were red as if they were drinking even before dusk. I mean, have you met Wong Som? That sounds about standard practice everywhere. Everyone inside started looking head to toe at these new merchants. Other people would get intimidated, but Juhi was confident all along. Of course she is. Also, we're in my point of view, because I didn't point that out. Juhi looked around and then stepped back arrogantly. It's Juhi. I don't think she can step back casually. What is this shabby place? Is this a commission agency? It was a combination of contempt and astonishment. What else is new? She didn't respond much when she saw the luxurious songbong the other day. Yeah, because she was jealous of Leader Kong. Duh. She and Wusung were in the fucking ALP. The stupid, stupidest thing. But she was responding well to shabby things. Well, not as much as when she first saw her guest room in the tavern, though. Yuki gave a sigh in a sassy way. Again, how else does she sigh? And tried to walk out of that place. I got surprised and pulled her back. Where are you going? I can't stay here anymore. And even if I stay, I don't know what kind of look should I put on my face. Then just follow my lead. What kind of peddler looks at Songdong like that? You should make a face like you're so happy to find somewhere to take a rest. Wow. I'm so happy. <laughs> <sighs> oh, fucking course. I gave up fixing her attitude. That was a losing game to begin with decided to get a room at the commissioner agency first. 
I got worried that Juhi might run away, so I rushed across the commission agency. I said hello to people first and smiled with my eyes, thinking of Gi signs from Gibong where Leader Kong took me before. Juhi followed me precariously with a disapproving face. Fucking come on, Juhi, you are being zero help. Why are you here? Remind me why we brought her again. When we got deeper, there was a guy sitting on the other side with ledgers stacked beside him. I approached a tan guy with ledgers beside him first. What is it? He looked intimidating, but when I glanced at him with suggestive eyes, his eyes got softer. Oh, God, no, are we gonna have to flirt our way? Ugh. I don't want to flirt with a man, though. I only like women. Ugh, gross. Excuse me, mister. We are female merchants who just came here from Hanyang who don't know shit about anything. Please help us, a big, strong man. Is there any room for us to stay? I showed him the merchant identity paper, but he didn't even look at it closely. He just wrote names on the ledger and kept looking at my face. I got self-conscious about my makeup, so I licked my lips, and then the guy chuckled like a playboy. I don't like where this is going. Juhi, help! Must be hard for young women like you to travel alone. Stay away. How come you didn't bring your husband with you? Stay away. Well, we're sisters doing business together and no room for a third. Fuck off. Don't even talk about my husband. I'm so unfortunate that it's already been 10 years since my husband died. Why would you do that? Why would you? No, I know why she's doing that, but come on. Ugh, don't make yourself available. Ugh. Huh, you became a widow at an early age. You must miss your husband so much since you've been a widow for a long time. Is he blushing? Yikes, okay. Mm, can you hetero not with this? Of course, you don't need to remind me. Just give us a room. When I tapped the guy's arm, the guy got surprised and blinked his eyes. Don't do that. You might think, wait, no, that's exactly why I'm doing that. I still hate it. I hate all of this. I felt warm on my shoulders. What? There are rooms for female merchants on the inside. You can sleep there, and if you get hungry later, just come out with a couple of poons. You can have a meal here. How nice. <laughs> it's nothing. And it will always be nothing. Let go of my hand. The guy tried to hold my hand slyly. I turned around swiftly and naturally and started to search my pockets. Oh, and can I ask you about things to buy around here when we go out? Of course I'll tell you. Come out any time when you get bored after unpacking. I'm always sitting here. We can have a chat. Isu, what have you done? The tanned guy grinned. His yellow teeth were showing. Luckily, I didn't hesitate at all. As long as we can solve the case quickly, who cares about the method or dignity? Do not sleep with him to get answers. Do not sleep with him to get answers. Oh my god. Even the king kneeled three times and bowed down to the ground nine times before. And the hero Han Jin... Jin? I don't know what the X sound makes in Korean. Crawled under someone else's crotch. Okay. You just called yourself a king and a hero, Hisu. I hope you know you think very highly of yourself. I smiled back at him and even fluttered my dress a little bit. <laughs> this is awkward. I got in the zone dancing frivolously and then when I turned back, I caught Juhi's eyes who dropped her jaw and looked at me. <laughs> That's right, Juhi's been watching us the entire time. Enjoy the view, sister. Juhi's face was deathly pale. She got so dumbfounded that her eyebrows almost rose vertically, and she slowly closed her mouth after catching my eyes. What's the matter? You see something you want? Again, come and get it. Contrary to her pale face, her eyes were glaring, and I could feel her anger spurting out towards me. <laughs> it's not for the reasons you think, Soyoung. Juhi walked towards me with big strides and roughly stretched my wrist. Um, I was about to wrap up here. He said the rooms for female merchants are in that way. Let's go then, hurry. She <laughs> grabbed my wrist even stronger. Hey, you're gonna draw blood. Again. Her palm was so soft since she grew up without doing any chores, but my wrist was about to be broken. Jesus. <laughs> I almost got dragged by Juhi when I looked back. The guy gave me a warm smile and waved at me. He even gave Juhi a sign with his eyes as if he's a handsome guy. No, mine. <laughs> How dare he tries to flirt with me. That filthy and vulgar... Juhi bit her lips out of anger, but she didn't get ratty anymore. <laughs> Until we're in our own room. Instead, she started to look for the guest room at a rapid pace. 
Oh, this is- I think this is literally the same as the one that the song bong. Oh, okay. The guest room the guy told us was small and old, but quite organized. As soon as we got in, we unpacked right away. The fake merchandise, including some clothes and mirrors, were heavy, even though they were fake. Well, yeah, because they still exist in reality. I carried the bundle that is the size of my body all alone. Because I couldn't let a noble lady Juhi to carry luggage. I almost collapsed and leaned on the luggage as soon as I put it down. God forbid someone who's trying to masquerade as a peasant carry something because she was a noble lady at some point. Oh no. Ugh, it's so hard to make money. I was lying in my arms, but I couldn't hear Juhi moving at all. Is she mad because I was flirting with that weird guy? I promise it didn't mean shit. She gets shocked easily by how I ruin a young Bond's dignity. I'm sure she must have been really disappointed at me today. Oh, honey, so young, that's every day. Maybe she's thinking of some complicated phrases from Confucian books, or a lot of complicated cuss words. Take your pick. I do quite enjoy this bouncy piano though, like, this bouncy but yet intense. I love this. I felt her eyes beam, but I didn't open my eyes. Okay, normally beam means like smiling and happy, but I think in this case they're more like laser beams. <laughs> In the meantime, I could feel the breeze under my legs drying off my sweat to my knees. After a while, Juhi mumbled and expressed her complaints, as usual. I get that he's not used to wearing women's clothes, but this is... too exposed. Her voice was so small, unlike the usual. Her attitude was so unusual, so I opened my eyes and saw Juhi looking down at me, frowning. Oh, I responded the complete wrong way. Whoops. I don't know what it is, but she seemed very serious. Then it started to bother me. Juhi was biting her lips for a while, and then she finally came at me. <laughs> uh, of course. Gah! What are you doing? I got astonished greatly and got up. But Juhi only pulled my skirt down and went back. <laughs> oh, are you covering my decency? How thoughtful of you. You don't have to pull up the skirt even when we're in the room. I got flustered, and then I looked down. My rolled up skirt must have been bothering Juhi. Huh. Not for the reasons you might think. She seemed angry since her face turned red. Uh-huh. How can you lie down like that, exposing your thighs? If you wear a skirt as a guy, you have to be careful. Gosh, there's nothing there to expose, Juhi, but okay. Okay, I got it. Anything else bothering you about my outfit? Juhi? I was wearing skirts all my childhood. She's treating me like I've never worn a skirt before. Again, she still thinks you're a dude, so... Not sure, but I guess strict banners in Northern Village are quite extraordinary. She carries none of them, but sure, she'll cover my legs. Still, has she never seen a plebeian girl exposing her ankles? I wiggled the skirt and then just put all my legs, even my toes, inside the skirt. <laughs> oh, so we're just butting up now. Oh my goodness. So, is it good enough for you now? <sighs> bet you he didn't say yes or no. Uh-huh. She just gave a big sigh. Her eyes were everywhere. Huh. You nagged me first, and now you're not responding. I held the tip of my socks and looked up at Juhi as if I was asking for permission. But Juhi just fiddled the skirt with a disapproving face. Didn't even want to look anywhere around me. Uh-huh. Then she went to the corner of the dirty room and sat down on that cold spot, hugging her knees. Why? It's like she was trying to sit furthest from me. Okay, if I said something wrong, I'm sorry, come back. You don't need to sit all the way over there, jeez. We're still friends, come here. Juhi always sat on the warm side of the room at home. Everything was really weird. It bothered me, so I kept looking back at Juhi, but she neither got ratty nor talked to me brightly. I kept catching her eyes every time I turned my head around. When I tilted my head, she avoided in the opposite direction, but when I looked down, she looked back up. I could feel her looking at the back of my head. Okay, are you upset because I disgraced the dignity of Yangban? How do you even ask when you know the answer? Juhi answered right away. But her face was still depressed. Thought she would get ratty a little more or nag me, but she didn't really mention much about the dignity of Yangban, and her voice was quite indifferent. I'm sure she got so shocked that she can't even say anything to me. I felt guilty and started making excuses with the softest voice I could make when talking to this motherfucker. I won't do it again once we see the ledger, so please, bear with me for a while. Let me talk to that guy to see the directory. Directory? In the commission agency, they make a directory of Pevlar when they first started business. So they have a list of new peddlers. Therefore, we'll be able to know where Lee Soma is once we look at the list of merchants here. He must have written where he went. When we find out, do we have to go there to find him? 
Yuki looked up at me to ask a question, but when she caught my eyes, she avoided my eyes again. Yuki used to look at people in the eyes too directly so far. So reserved that she even put her face so close to Dama when she first met her, she's been living with us in one room. But now she's treating me like I have some contagious disease. I was getting frustrated. Why don't you look me in the eyes? Am I that disgusting? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Seriously? Of course. Don't you think a guy wearing women's clothes is disgusting? Oh, Juhi, please don't tell me you actually feel that way. That's so unseemly. Unseemly. You are so unseemly that I can't even stand looking at you. So please stop looking at me. Please. Juhi ended up yelling at me. Yeah, what else is new? But come on. Where would you want? Clothes don't have a fucking gender. Jesus. I'm hoping that's just some excuse that she made up because honestly, like, Juhi of all people, why would she care? With her unexpected yell, I got startled and shrunk up. Juhi's eyes were quite scary. Then I turned my back against her. And anyway, we're not going out to go outside of Hanyang to find him. Then we need to get paid five times more and I don't think they have that much money. I told her that we're just going to tell him where their son went. When I was mumbling and looking at her, I caught her eyes again. He seemed like she was going to cry out of anger. Oh, God. Hey. Hey, 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 talk to me. You don't have to... Oh, God. Why are you crying, hun? Ugh. What is wrong with her? I didn't know what to do, so I looked away and kept staring at the wall. I would just come here alone regardless of how that might look if I knew she was going to act like this. Or I should have just let her leave when she was about to go back earlier. Then... Someone knocked on the door from the outside. Hey ladies, do you want to have some meal? No, go away! The guy who tried to hold my hand before came to ask if we wanted to eat something since we've been in this room for too long. Oh. We're already out. Alright, fine. The table was already set. I still can't- Why did I make her cry? I'm sorry! Dewey! I guess the guy who hit on me made other people set the table for us. He asked us to call him a boat guy, not mister doesn't like to be called mister since it might sound a little old. Or now he wasn't a merchant, just fixes the boat for river merchants. That's why he's always in this commission agency and in charge of making a list of merchants and organizing merchandise. By the way, why do you want to see the list of new peddlers? My brother from Hanyang told me he would become a peddler and follow me. It's already been over two years, but I haven't heard from him yet. So I was wondering if he became a peddler this time. Your brother? The guy's tone changed suddenly. This kind of guy gets so upset so easily by just some minor things, so I quickly smiled and shook my head. I mean my real brother. Not like that kind of brother who takes care of me. Oh my god, stop. I hate this. Oh, then maybe I can take care of you now. No! 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 Back up! Back it up! Get away! Oh dear, how naughty. Please stop. <laughs> oh, Juhi, I'm sorry. While the boat guy went to get the list, I could feel Juhi looking at me angrily again. Stop looking at me like that! I'm just doing this for money! You weren't going to give us away! I don't like it either! If that makes you feel any better, I hate this too, but come on! While I yelled quietly while he's gone, Juhi raised one side of her lips with a disapproving look. I didn't say anything, did I? Juhi, you know what you said. I'm just so amazed by a wily guy who's so willing to mesmerize anyone to get what he wants. Anyone including you? A wily guy. She was only angry before, now she's sarcastic. When I was about to say something back to her, the boat guy came in with a list of new merchants, laughing broadly. He smiled widely and tossed the directory to me. I glared at Juhi and then forced myself to smile at the boat guy. See if your brother is on that list. By the way, how long are you going to stay here? Not long enough for you to do anything about it. We're thinking of staying for about two weeks. Go away. Oh, really? <laughs> we're gonna get really close. No, we're not! The boat guy kept moving his hands looking for a chance to put his arm around my shoulders. I noticed that, but pretended I didn't. Mm. I have nothing to do with this agency anymore once I see this directory. It's gonna stay for one night to avoid suspicion. It's going to get out of this place early in the morning. Let's see. I think the second son's name was Lee Soma. I started to skim through the names in the directory, tracing down with my finger. I looked for the names from the recent dates. Kim, Park, Oh, Choi, and a lot of other people. There were a couple of people whose last name was Lee, but no one had the name So Ma. Not among the peddlers, porters, or even passengers on the boat. Did you find your brother's name? 
No. His parents said he disappeared after telling his parents that he's going to be a merchant in the River Commission Agency. But why isn't his name on the list? His parents clearly told me that it's River Commission Agency. Is this the son? Is the guy flirting with me the fucking... Uh, no, don't let that be. I can already see where this could go. The thing, like, we bring him back to his parents, and then, and then he's like, Oh, you should let me marry her since he re they reunited us. <sighs> Please don't let that happen. Please, no. Did Lee Soma not become a merchant? Or maybe he failed to become one. Oh, and why don't you stay at my room tonight? My room is so warm. I'm just worried because I remember that rooms for female merchants are quite cold. No. No. So young, don't you dare. Oh, I'm afraid I'm too tired today since I just arrived here today. How about tomorrow? After unpacking. When I rejected the offer and suggested tomorrow, the guy scratched his head awkwardly. But then soon he seemed to anticipate. I guess he got better when I nodded when he asked me, So, tomorrow then? I was tilting my head and being coy, Juhi went ahead and left the room again. No, don't leave me with him, please, Juhi, come back. No. Ah, come back. Don't leave me with him. Ugh. All right, we're in your point of view now. Hi, Chewie. Gosh, so frustrated. Before long, Hisu followed her, fluttering his short skirt. Then he slid into the room before Juhi even opened the room. His shoes fell to the ground. <laughs> I forgot I looked like that for a second. Miss Juhi, wait for me, please. You keep walking away all along. He used honorific as usual, and then he looked around quickly as he got worried that someone might hear him. Hisu untied the skirt and adjusted his clothes even when he's distracted. He seemed to be conscious about their conversation earlier. He lowered the skirt, took out his writing supplies, and pressing his temple with his brush handle. And by the way, there was no Lee Soma on the list. As soon as he got the brush, Hisu sat down in the cold spot in the room first, where Juhi was sitting earlier. He looked up, drawing lines on the paper. Juhi naturally sat on the warmer spot of the room. What happened? I said Lee Soma told him he's going to become a peddler here. I think it's the boat guy, but I goddamn hope it isn't, because I don't want to talk to him anymore. So now it became a bigger problem. He didn't become a merchant and just disappeared. Hisu drew a house and a commission agency on the paper and drew arrows on it. First, the brothers left home and went to the commission agency to become merchants. The younger brother went home first. The older brother decided to stay and be a peddler. But then no one knows what happened next. And he didn't go back to his home. It's better if he just decided not to go back home on his will, but otherwise it's a missing case. I have a bad feeling about this. We should get out of this place at dawn first. We should join Sung and then make a whole new place from scratch. Juhi's just dumbfounded and then answered in a long time. At dawn? I will be dragged to that boat guy's room if we stay here one more day. Isu shuddered belatedly. Then the drums were rolling from a distance. It was to inform that it's 10 p.m. Isu turned towards the window where the sound came from and pricked his ears. He pricked his ears for a while like a swift wild animal and started making a bed as soon as he lost interest. Let's sleep now. We have to leave early and it's going to be really busy tomorrow. He used to clean the papers and pack their stuff as if he was being chased by someone then turn off the light without any notice. But then the light came from a high window so they could see everything so clear. Just people in the room and some objects were glowing blue. Yuhi could clearly see Hisu pulling off the binyo from his head in the dark. You could see him untying the hair and combing it with his hand. When he gathered the hair, his pale neck was showing. You turned off the light before I even lie down. Are you night blind? You can just sit down and lie towards the opposite side of the window. Yuki tilted her head slowly, chasing Hisu with her eyes. Him giving the only blanket to her, lying on the side with no blanket, crawling and such. His hair was tossed on the left cheek and gathered around his chest, and his right ear was showing. You could see everything. Yuki didn't say anything, just sat on the floor. He put the blanket Hisu gave her on her legs and straightened the crinkled mat on the floor. And Hisu fell asleep so quickly in the meantime. He must have been so tired from walking all day with the heavy luggage and chatting all day. Yuhi looked at Hisu falling asleep in an uncomfortable position and gave a sigh. The skirt was on the ankle now. Every part of his clothes is tidy and neat now. She felt like there were still too many spots to cover. He should have only mesmerized that boat guy. What a prick. Juhi buried herself in the blanket, whispering the curse word she learned from Makwa. Wait, have I mesmerized you too? Aww. Aww. She didn't know what to do. It was not the dignity of Yangban that bothered Juhi. Just Hisu in a skirt. 
his pale and long neck, his soft and pink cheek that looks so smooth and smells like cheap powder, his chin, his feeble but neat shoulder line and his skinny wrist under his sleeves, his pale wrist and fingers. She suddenly noticed all the feminine parts of him. Why did she start noticing those parts? She had no idea. Huh. She buried herself even deeper in her arms. She was not watching Hisu anymore now, but she kept seeing things. His dark brown eyes were moister than other people. What? All soft and the beautiful lines on his face and the body. The wind from the chink of the door cooled down her skin, but her head hasn't cooled down at all. Yuhi unconsciously licked her lips and looked up. Her heart was beating so fast that it hurt and her body was feeling tight. Oh, are you realizing that you really, really like me? Aw, oh, you're gonna be so relieved when you find out I'm a girl. I'm getting crazy. I'm too underprepared for this. I can't believe how contemptuous I am for having a crush on anyone who dresses like a woman, even though it's a guy. There were times that I wished I was into guys, but I didn't ask for something like this. A guy in women's clothes? What kind of joke is this? It's much better when I simply liked women. Maybe you... Okay, I know for a fact like Juhi is a lesbian, but like, it's okay to like feminine guys. <laughs> like, if you're into guys but only feminine ones, it's called having a type, you know? And that can always change if you fall for someone, so. But I get it for Juhi, who's like, just figured out that she's a lesbian. Well, I don't know how no long she's known, actually. But I feel for her. Juhi reached her hand to Hisu's ear, who was sleeping, turning his back against her. But she paused for a while before she touched his ear. When the wind blew, the breeze from the nearest port came along through the window. Her finger was shaking in the air of fishy smell from the water. What should I do? Oh, wait, I'm making a choice for Juhi? Okay, let's save really fast, but I think we're gonna touch him. <laughs> it's just my ear, she's not doing anything sexual, otherwise I'd say do not. Okay, go ahead. She put her hands on his cheek, but nothing happened. When she opened her tightly closed eyes, she could see Hisu's chest moving up and down, breathing. She could feel his breath on her palm and she could still smell the powder. It was dark, but she could see how red his lips are and how dark his eyes are. But his eyes are closed. His eyes. She lifted her index finger and touched Hisu's eyebrows. Then Hisu crinkled his nose and crouched even more. Suddenly Juhi got incredibly gloomy. What's wrong? As she started to get frustrated. He made me confused like this and he's just sound asleep like that? How? <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> hey! Seriously, we have to be up at dawn. What are you doing? Wake up! Juhi instantly slapped Isu's shoulder. Isu freaked out and woke up. Ugh. How can you as a guy think of sleeping next to a lady? You came over here. This is so ridiculous. Get out. I'm sleeping here alone. Uh, uh, huh? Yusu was still half asleep. He touched his cheek in bewilderment and just put the blanket back on with an annoyed face. You were so fine at home. What are you talking about? Gosh, let's just sleep. Brat. Go sleep in that boat guy or whatever the guy's room since you are both guys. You've been all over him earlier. I can't sleep with you in this small room. I told you to move. Move. <laughs> oh. Jealous Juhi, oh my goodness. Hello, little Spitfire. With Juhi's fuss, Isu hurriedly got up even before tying his clothes properly. And Juhi got even more frustrated. He had no idea why, but his clothes sit down one side and his pale shoulder was showing. Never heard of any scholar being ill-behaved like this. It's too much even considering the fact that he's a guy. Juhi was in the zone now, uh-huh. Her eyes were glaring. When she lifted the pillow and swung, Isu screamed and ran to the corner. Ah, where am I supposed to go, crazy lady? Then just stay there. I won't condone it if you move in one step closer. Uh-huh. You're such a brat. Oh my god. When she threatened him, he soon nodded with his barely opened eyes. <laughs> go okay, crazy. He looked so fragile in his women's clothes looking up at Juhi, and it made Juhi even angrier. It's not like she was expecting him to be like his bulky brother, but this was too much. Adjust your clothes. It slid down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Only after watching Hisu completely tying a clothes string, Juhi went back to her spot, still in anger. Oh, uh -huh. oh my. You're such a fight. Juhi, you're such a brat. I mean, what else was I expecting? But come on. Fucking trying to kick me out of that boat guy's room of all places. Come on. Oh, back in my point of view. Good, great. Now we get to be confused, but in my point of view now. Oh, hi, Wusung. Brother. Wusung came to meet me and Juhi early in the morning. Thank fuck. He said he just waited in front of the commission agency. Given that he already threw away his monk's robe, his disguise must have failed in the first place. <laughs> I mean, he's too big to look like a monk who only eats vegetables. I wanted to wave at him, but as soon as I raised my hand, I felt the sharp pain and crouch. My body was sore everywhere since I slept curled up at that cold spot. Aww. Still couldn't figure out why the fuck Juhi was upset last night. Why did she slap me like that? Looked back at her angrily, but she just scoffed with her arms crossed. You're such a brat. She didn't apologize at all. Of course she didn't. I got busted that I'm not a real monk in the first place. Oh, by the way, I got the information. Information? What information? I heard about when the merchants here last saw that Lee So Ma guy. Merchants? Yes, you know that I have to pay about 100 pounds of rice to the commission agency to become a peddler, right? Allegedly, Lee So Ma was debating a lot if he really should become a peddler before he pays the price. He said he was crying, saying if it's okay for him to leave his parents for his brothers to take care of. Then he just bought a couple of basses and... I read that as the musical instrument my musician is showing. Then he just bought a couple of basses and some salted seafood instead of rice. We have some useful information as well. Lee So Ma's name is not on the list of merchants. Then we all caught each other's eyes. Lee So Ma didn't buy rice and even bought seafood that can do it go bad soon. He wasn't planning to go anywhere far. So Lee So Ma gave up being a peddler and went back home. He bought some salted seafood and side dishes since he felt guilty that he almost left his parents. He must have taken a long way home. He seemed going around reproaching himself for even thinking about it. But then he disappeared on the way home. But to where? If Lee So Ma went straight home, there must be some leads on the way. Isn't that old couple's village near here? Then we might find out something if we follow the path he would take. Okay. Cool. We looked around and started walking around the road that Lee So Ma would have taken. There was only one road from the commission agency to his village. There was no side road at all. Wu Sung went ahead with his big steps and looked around. Oh. Pretty. Where do you think he went missing? Before he arrives at the village, or after? And certainly not after he arrives at the village. If he made it to the village, there must be some witnesses who saw him in the village. And the old couple wouldn't have come to me crying for help. And it's not near the commission agency either. There are too many people in that area. Then only this road is left. Oh, Juhi's back in her normal outfit, hello. But how can a guy disappear in the middle of the road without anyone knowing? Juhi showed a really bad attitude, talking back. What? <laughs> she didn't even respond to what I said and just responded a little to what Wu Sung said. Even when I got in front of her and tried to catch her eyes, she tried so hard to avoid it. Hmm. I didn't like Juhi's attitude at all, but I couldn't risk her becoming an angry tiger again. Oh, I'm gonna start calling her that now. She's my little tiger. Oh my goodness. Again, like last night by asking why. Did her mom drink a fox's blood when she was pregnant? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why is she so flaky? Then Wusung screamed at the front. What? Brother, here. Oh. <laughs> oh, ew, blood. <laughs> when I ran towards him, Wusung was pointing at some dark red stain. Actually, that also could be wine. It was certainly not blood. Oh, never mind, I'm wrong. Looked at Juhi's face for a while and then bent over and smelt it. it smelled the faint, fishy, and spicy smell. Fish blood? I think someone spilled salted seafood here. Oh. So yes, fish blood? I don't know. When I got up, I could feel the breeze. If anyone went missing here, it's quite a big deal. This area is surrounded by woods and the mountain. I took around slowly and looked into the shape of the road. Since there are a lot of trees, it's easy for someone to hide, but since the road is rough, the way out is not quite idealistic. This whole place seemed like a creepy trap. But this is where Lee So Ma he must have dropped whatever he was holding. Am I still dressed like a girl right now? I can't tell, since we're in my point of view, we're never going to see it. 
Well, I mean, since Juhi's back in normal clothes, I guess I would be too. Never mind. It was against his will. He was just walking, but then he got ambushed by someone. He struggled with a suspect and got dragged. There are only two ends of this road. I don't think he got dragged either to the port or to a village. Then it means he went up the mountain. Then Wu Sung grabbed the rock and went up, then grabbed the trunk of a tree. Quite a lot of twigs were broken when there was even not a road here. It would have been impossible for one person to carry a big guy who's resisting so hard and hike up the mountain. Then two people? No, at least three. Maybe more than that. Then... This is not an impulsive incident. Someone planned it. Yuhi was still looking at somewhere else when she talked to me. But then I don't think they specifically aimed for him. Why is that? If they aimed at someone, they must have lured that person to the place where they can easily get him. But there's no evidence that he was lured. Lee Soma was going back home impulsively a few days after he came here. He didn't have any plans himself. So it's completely a coincidence that he was walking on this road at that time. It doesn't make sense that someone can plan his impulsive decision. So the suspects weren't aiming for Lee So Ma. Therefore, this is... Random kidnapping? He just wanted to kidnap someone no matter who. Let's tell his family first and then tell the Poshan. I'm gonna help them file information. Oh, I guess we're going back then. Cool. Oh, back in Juhi's point of view. Lovely. <laughs> it didn't take that long to help Lee So Ma's family file information and then come back to Zhang Huso. Since the music is so casual, was that just like kind of a filler case to like, I guess, push that rat along? I don't know. All Juhi's blank the whole time, he soon noisily went to Lee So Ma's house, called the old couple, and then wrote the plate frivolously, fluttering his sleeves twice. He persuaded them over and over to file information, telling them it's a big deal, and occasionally threatening them with some nonsense. The old couple didn't want to go to the Poshang at first, but they left home crying after he soon seriously persuaded them. It's not like he's doing it for free, but given that he claims that he only does this as much as he gets paid, he was doing a lot for them. Okay, we're back in normal clothes. <laughs> he must have filed information at the Poshung, right? Isu sat on the chair, rubbing his fingers stained with ink. This is a serious problem. People don't know how to write the plant without a lawyer, and even if they get a lawyer, they just get ripped off. People really need to go to the Poshung unless they want to be victimized. But the plebeians don't know how to read. Anyway, let's go to Upo Sheng soon. Wouldn't it be better if the police superintendent Zheng can be in charge of this case? Yuhi was sitting there listening to their quite vulgar conversation. No Yang Ban from Hanyang would have known more about the plebeians than them. <laughs> Is that a weird little dig at me? Because it doesn't feel like it. Sometimes they don't even know well about the mainstream Yang Ban lives, even though they are Yang Bans. Yuhi stopped thinking further and bitter lips. Why do I care anyway? Then get ready. Get some money to bribe him too. Juhi's watching Hisu getting up, fluttering his old dopa with a disturbed look. Surprisingly, what Juhi was really afraid of didn't happen. Such is the case that her heart keeps beating fast, even though Hisu went back to normal, that she still wants to touch him or that she can't take her eyes off him. Like what she was worried about, she didn't feel that weird feeling towards him today like she did yesterday. Well, she can't say she's completely fine now, but she was calm enough not to worry about it. Juhi grabbed her coat, but not to follow Hisu. I'm not going to follow you. But are you going to stay in Zheng Huso and keep the store? No. I'm having my own time so you two solve the case. I mean, I'm not part of the store in the first place anyway, and... I don't want to hang around with you today. Oh, Juhi, just talk to me like an adult. We're both adults, just talk to me. Whatever I did, I'm sorry, okay? This isn't nearly as angsty as Saiyan's route, but come on. I don't even know how fine I am now, to be honest. Isu's tying up a top knot and wearing a gat now, but she felt like she could still see him in a skirt wearing a binyo. It's going to be like this for at least a couple more days. When she looked at him again, Isu's lips were quite red, even without lip gloss. Anyway, I'll just go to the tavern and do whatever I feel like doing. What do you mean? It's dangerous. Don't come near me. Hey! Yo! What? Oh, hold on, regardless of your feelings, what the hell? Hey, what did I do? When she yelled at him, Hisu got startled and stepped back. Juhi felt bad a little and turned her head, grabbing her skirt. I'll only use the main road. Juhi went out of Jung Huso even before he says anything. It was almost like she was running away. Again. Juhi. 
I'm sorry. Come back. I know you're struggling with your feelings right now, but just talk to me. Fine. The outside was so uproarious. She decided to put her coat over her head when she got near the market. She told them confidently, but it was the first time she's ever been out alone since she ran away from home. <laughs> At least bring Makwa, come on. Hanjong Street felt strange even though she's been walking here every day. She didn't think about it when she ran away from home, but she felt self-conscious when walking alone. Yeah, she's a woman alone. Get this, this is good. This is nice silk. Let's get in. I'll get you some skirts at a nice price. She walked across the clamorous market as if she was running away. She is running away from her feelings. Ugh. The name of the street, Anjong, means cloud, as in people gather in this place like a cloud. It was not for Juhi, who's been living in quiet northern village for her whole life. All right, let's go. What? Then as she walked a little while, she could hear Hisu's voice in her ears. That chatty guy knows he's smart and can't stop talking about all kinds of things. Now she can hear him even when he's not around. She looked back every time, but there were only strange faces instead of Hisu. Oh, baby misses me. She thought briefly that he might follow her out of worry, but of course that wouldn't happen. He would have gone straight to solve the case and also respect your wishes because he's crazy about money and to respect your wishes. That bastard would marry the money. I mean, you're technically wealthy, so... If I married you, I'd still be marrying money, so... <laughs> Yuki got mad alone and headed to the bridge. When she crossed the Heejung Bridge, then the road got a little more spacious. Yuki stopped and looked around slowly. All the places there were fortune tellers' shops. Hmm. Oh, wait. Weird music. What's happening? Wait, Juhi? Hello? Oh. That took a very... Oh, did you go inside? Is that why it waited so long? Okay, weird. After getting out of the shop, went out to the street, Juhi took a deep breath. She felt kind of suffocated earlier, but now she felt like she could breathe again. She put her coat over her head and started walking again. For walking a while, she could sense some familiar and ominous energy. If you could tell who she was since she was wearing vivid color clothes with a group of bodyguards and servants. Leader Kong? Leader Kong? Is it? Oh, you lucky motherfucker. It was impossible not to recognize her even from the distance, especially when she was not even smaller than the other people around her. Oh, she's tall. Oh. 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 He turned it back against her as Leader Kong shouted from the distance, but it was too late. Oh, you should be so lucky, Juhi. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait for Leader Kong's route. She could hear the footsteps getting faster. What should I do? Should I just run away? When she was hesitating, she could hear a familiar voice right next to her. My lady, how are you walking around alone like that? How inappropriate. What about you? Why did you bring all your squad in this narrow road? Juhi turns around towards Kong Yurin with a disapproving face. She felt like she was losing, covering her face carefully in front of a merchant she always sees. Well, I mean, come on. Look at her. <laughs> God, I am in a desert and I am so fucking thirsty. <laughs> when she put her coat off her head, Yurin laughed unbelievably sighing over her head. This is Fortune Teller's Alley. I came here to ask my fortune teller about the best day to start ginseng business. Is that so? Then you should get going now. By the way, what brought you here? Leader Kong was standing right in front of Juhi and blocked her view as if she has no intention to make way for Juhi. Hmm? They say people get shameless as she gets older. She's an older woman? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh my god. That was not wrong. Or maybe she's been like this since she was born. Leader Kong didn't care if Juhi didn't answer the question and asked her companies to step back. When Juhi got self-conscious and frowned, Leader Kong smiled even wider. Do you have any worry? She felt like she had got caught. What if I do? Just asking since you seem quite frustrated. Juhi didn't have the heart to be nice to her. Juhi, you have never been nice to her in the history of ever. Come on. But Leader Kong didn't care at all, being pretentious and acting like a generous adult. Well, you're acting like a child, Juhi, so... Oh. I know a place that have delicacy called Castella. It came from the Netherlands a few years ago. It came through the Japanese Trade Center a while ago. It make you feel better to have something sweet. She was surprised and shook her head, but Leader Kong just went ahead. 
Jane didn't say she would come with her, but her bodyguards already came next to Juhi and started guarding her. <laughs> oh, I love how assertive she is. Oh, wait! They didn't even wait for her to be flustered. Of course not. It's Leader Kong. She'd have got time for that. <laughs> They just escorted Juhi as if there's no other choice, so Juhi unexpectedly got to follow Leader Kong. I mean, who can say no to that face? I certainly could not. All right, well, I'm going to say because that was certainly a lot, and we've been going for like an hour, and this seems like it's going to be a whole other thing. My goodness, Leader Kong just sweeping me off the streets like that. Well, she swept Juhi off the streets, but honestly, like... At this point, if Juhi's route means that she gets to end up with a pretty lady, that's all I could ever hope for for Juhi because, hey, she deserves a bit of happiness. So whoever she ends up with, I'll be okay with. I'll be supportive, you know? Honestly, after, like, I finished my first playthrough, I feel like I'm more chill with, like, whatever the outcome may be because I feel like I got my through ending, but I'm really excited to see how much further Juhi's route unfolds. I know it's highly unlikely that she and Leader Kong are going to get together unless I really screw this route up, but um, I'm very excited and very intrigued, and now we're like getting to watch Juhi struggle with some feelings, and I'm wondering how the game's going to handle these kind of like intrusive thoughts, you know what I mean? I'm very, very excited and very, very intrigued. Oh my god, I'm so glad that we're still playing this game. Uh, and I'm so glad that you lot are enjoying it so much too. That makes me so happy. So thank you so much for whoever has you watching this. I cannot wait to get back with our girl. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe it really does help me out. And until next time, bye!